Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna to talk about line styles in layout. So this video is actually a follow-up video to a request we had on a previous video. Previously, we did a little section, a little video on uh, line styles in SketchUp. When you create a tag, you can attribute a different line style to it. So that can be solid. By default, it's just a solid line. But if you want to, you can actually go in and say everything on this tag gets a certain kind of line style, like dashed or whatever. Uh, and the question came up, what happens when you get to layout? So that's what this is. We're gonna talk about taking that model. It's actually the exact same model that we used in the previous video. We're gonna take it right into layout right now and see what we can do with it. So let's check it out. All right, so this is that model. This is the model we used. We talked about uh, you know, adding some walkways and this particular scene was about these uh, you know, call outs areas. I don't know what you'd call it, whatever, whatever all this is where I have some lines here specifying different locations, that kind of thing. What we really wanna look at is just these dashed lines and see how, what they are, how they work and what we can control once we get into layout. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna, just to make this simpler, right now we are in this model's drawn as a raster. So if I zoom in close in here like this, you can see that uh, this is pretty low quality. And since we're sitting here talking about line styles, I figure we should probably up that uh, that value or that that uh, quality a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just with this model, with this, this uh, model window open, I'm just gonna come in here and change it from raster to hybrid, that's of course going to change how all edges are drawn to actually vector drawn edges, but then it's gonna keep our materials from the raster, which is what that the hybrid does, as opposed to just going to a straight raster image, which would give us nice clean lines, but then also flat single colors. So there we go, we got that. So now if I zoom in here and see, see those edges are nice and crisp, no matter how I look at them. This uh, right down here, same thing, we have some edges we drew. So you can see, so right off the bat, you can see that the edges we brought in with the tags show up exactly like they did in SketchUp. So there's not a big difference right now. If I come over here to, again, the, the model window still selected. If I come to this very bottom option, I have tags. If I drop that down, very similar to what we see in SketchUp, I have the ability to toggle a tag on and off, and then I can also change the line style. So in this case, uh, if we go to our outline and drop that down, I can see I can change it from dashes to, you know, maybe a, a tight dash like that, whereas dash dot dash before, and I could click OK. And it does take just a second here. It's instantaneous in SketchUp, but in this case, it does have to go through and re-render the entire window when we make changes like this. So just a second or two, and then that new one will pop up. And there we go. Uh, just like I said, nice tight dash. So you can see it's Pretty simple, works just the exact same way that it did in SketchUp. But because we are inside layout, we have some more options. Um, on In SketchUp, all edges are the same size. They're all relative to the setting that you put in. There's one setting for edge style, uh, and that's it. I mean, we have the ability to do things like profiles, that kind of thing. But for the most part, when we think about edge width, it's all set. Um, remember that SketchUp is like modeling something in the real world in 3D. The two surfaces meet, they, they don't actually, an edge is not a thing. You don't see a line show up when you hold two pieces of paper next to each other. Um, so lines are just kind of representative in, in SketchUp. That's why you can actually turn them off and keep modeling just as you would with, with them. In layout, lines are kind of what draw the whole your whole thing, your output is basically all relative to the lines you create. So we have more options. So over here where I have my, my dash, I have the ability to scale and change edge width. So let's, let's go ahead and scale this up to like two and click okay. And again, it is going to have to render uh, every time I make a change. So depending on my render settings, this could go real fast or it could take a second. I have mine set fairly high, so it does take a couple of seconds to render each time I make a change. There we go. You can see those, those edges are twice as far apart. The dashes are twice as large as they were before. And that is just dashed type, line type scaling. 
The other option I have in here is the width. So by default, it's one point, but I could come in here and I can bump this up or take it down. So I could make it extremely narrow and hard to see, or I could just go, let's go just, let's just get big with it. Just give me big, thick, dense lines uh, all around here. All right, there you go. You can see how that line was way bumped up. Um, maybe a little excessive, but it really depends on what you're doing here. If the point of this entire drawing is for these two boundaries to be seen, then bumping it up kind of makes a lot of sense. We can do the opposite too. So if I want something to be fainter, I could come in and see, see this line right here. This is actually on different edges on the pathway edge. I could come in here and say, um, let's leave it the same type, but let's, uh, let's bring it down to like half a point and let that re-render, which is just going to make this little gray dashed line harder to see as opposed to more standout like we did with the other one. There you go, like that. Um, something else to note. See how my corners are, are breaking maybe a little odd, a little weird. I have seen these gaps in here. I didn't weld any of this stuff together. So each of these is an edge, then an arc, then an edge, then an arc, then an edge, then an arc. Um, so I didn't weld it together. So I'm getting some brokenness. Um, some of that might be improved if I went through and actually welded it all together. It might not look quite as broken on like some of these, these bigger ones right here. You will notice that because I'm changing the entire tag here, so let's go ahead and let's set this back down to one. And I say, okay, both my red and my blue lines change because both of these lines, both of these chains of lines are on the same tag. It's not a property per line. It's not a property per entity. It is actually a property connected to the tag. So everything on the tag gets the same update, uh, whether, you know, you can, I can't come in here and say, just change this line, change this one line. It does have to be assigned. So something to note, I can't just come in here and change lines willy nilly. It does have to be connected to lines uh, that are in tags, edges that are in tags to make those changes. But there you go. That's the amount of control you have over edges and line styles related to tags once you get into layout. So first thing I want to do is say thank you for the person who left that comment. I apologize for not having that information available to me. I probably should have ran and grabbed that before I started recording, but now we're here. So thank you so much. Um, appreciate that you asked the question because it gave us another chance to show something and go a little bit deeper than, than a lot of answers could. Um, we do like when you ask questions in the the comments, it it a lot of times spawns videos like these or, or other, we, we realize what you're struggling with or what information you want and it's really helpful for us. I apologize if you've ever gone up onto the forum and said, please tell me how to do this, this or this. And the response is, please take that over to our forum and ask there instead of in YouTube comments. Um, sometimes when we start talking about specific models or specific specific issues you're running into, it's just easier to take it over to a forum where you can upload a picture or actually upload the model to share. And we open it up to uh, ten, hundreds of thousands, I think, of, of members that can help you answer that question as opposed to just whoever on my team is looking at the comments in YouTube that particular day. So um, here, love comments about what kind of videos we should make, specifics about how you use what we're doing, that sort of thing over there in the forums everything else, how to use it, questions you're having on specific models, that kind of thing. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, like I was saying, comment, 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 please do comment. Worst case, if you ask something that requires more than we're capable of doing inside of YouTube comments, we'll just suggest taking it to the forum. Don't let that hold you back from, from letting us know what you wanna see. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see.